what I really felt to talk about tonight, not the School of Transformation, although it's incredible, but I wanted to talk to you about the, the opportunity that we have to listen to Jesus. Because again, oh no, okay, I was about to like segue back into the school. <clears throat> coming back, coming back. All right. But we want to learn how to listen to Jesus, yes? Because his words are the words of life. And when I read the Gospels and I read the things that he says, it's astounding to me for us to look at and go, he really laid it out. He cares so much that he lays it out in front of us for us to know ahead of time what to expect. I was, um, I was reading several chapters throughout this week and it was dawning on me that it was like, it was almost as if this analogy of somebody came in the door and said, there's a storm coming. And we all went out to the windows and looked and saw blue skies. And we'd go, okay, sure, there's a storm coming. And then next thing you know, there's a storm raging outside. And we go, oh, guess what we're all going to do? We're all going to go find that person that warned us ahead of time, right? We're going to go find that person and be like, how did you know? How did you know that there was a storm coming and so Jesus lays out throughout his Gospels these things that he's like, I want you to know this. I want you to know these things so that when these things occur, you'll believe. You'll believe that I am the one he sent to you to tell you these things because I love you, because I care about you, because I want you to be with me. And he, the things that he warns us about are not easy. My goodness, I was reading through John 14, and it's just, he starts it off by saying in verse 1, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. That's something I think we can remind ourselves of every single day, don't you? Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He is speaking to them to say, there is crucifixion coming. There is where I will no longer be walking with you, but I will be away from you, but take heart. I'm telling you this in advance so you know, so that you're prepared, so that when it occurs, you'll remember what I told you, but you will remember to believe in me that you should not let your heart be troubled. Circumstances want to tell us so often, let your heart be troubled, be troubled, be anxious, be fearful, be freaking out, <laughs> right? Circumstances tell us that very loudly. And he starts it off, do not let your heart be troubled. Everything he's about to unload on them, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he goes on to tell them about what he's preparing for them, why he's choosing to leave, and that if they love him, they will obey him. They will follow the commands of the things that he has laid out in advance for them as a clear path and direction for them to follow so that they wouldn't get lost, so that they wouldn't fall away, so that they wouldn't end up somewhere and go, how did we get here? But if they followed the instruction and the path that he set before them, they would see his glory come that he promised them. This home that he went to prepare a place for. And it's amazing to me too that he at one point prays for us. As he's praying for his disciples before he's about to enter into this trial and this crucifixion and flogging and all the just horror that we couldn't imagine... He prays for us, for those who believe because of his disciples' message. That is us, right? We believe because of what we have read in these pages, because of what they have transcribed through the years and what they exemplified in their lives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, he says. If you keep his commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's and abide in his love. I will ask the father, and he will give you another 
a helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. If we listen to these words that Jesus is saying, he started off earlier, believe in God, believe in me. So he is not lying when he says this is what he's going to do. He will not leave you as an orphan. But the Holy Spirit will live in you forever. Forever. This is this mark that he leaves inside of you that means you belong to him. That you have this access and connection to him. That gives you this ability to now be transformed into looking like him. Because out of our own power and might, it's not going to get very far. That's why he has to pre-warn. Do not let your heart be troubled. Because, I mean, attention span. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Our attention span. Oh. Like I said, I had two small children. So it's quite interesting to watch the attention span of when you're like trying to communicate something with one. You got to get down in their level and you're like, okay, eyes on me. And they're like, no, 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 no. I listen to the words that I'm trying to tell you. And I feel like so often we do that. We're like, oh, oh. And Jesus is going, look me in my eyes. Do not be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in the words that I speak to you because I'm not going to lead you astray. I'm going to tell you plainly, if you have ears to hear, you will hear and understand and know where to go. So follow me, right? Right? We know this. These are things that he said in here. And he tells us, he leaves us his Holy Spirit so that then we would be led into truth. He will lead us into truth. We will lack nothing. Further on, it says in verse 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance what I said to you. That is incredible. Look at how he makes the way possible for us. Look at how great his love is for us, that even into his telling his disciples, I'm about to leave you, physically leave you, but I will not leave you. I will be with you, and you will know what to do because I will be in you. And as I am in you, as you are in me, then we will know the way to go, which will lead you to the Father. And what hope we have then? Because then... Here's the fun part, too. Then he goes on to tell them about what to expect. The persecution that will come. How the world will now hate them. The world will now hate them because they are his. So this is what we get to expect, too. The world will hate us because we are his. If we are willing to step out into the trust that he is who he says he is. Do not let yourself be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. The world will hate you because it hated me first. If you were the world's, it would love you. He says that in chapter 15 of John. If, the, if you were the world's, the world would love you. But if, since you are not of the world any longer, it hates you because it hated me, because you belong to me. That deposit of Holy Spirit in us transforms us into looking like him, acting like him, speaking like him, because we know the way to go, because he lays it out so clearly by leading and guiding us that then we can go, no, no, this world and all this stuff, that's passing. That's not going to be here for forever. He is making a home for us for forever. That with him is our forever. So then I need to make sure that I am running the race that he says qualifies me for this forever. Because if his presence is living inside of me, I don't want to do anything that dishonors that. Because I believe in him. Who he is. What he says. And that when these things come, he says, these things I have spoken to you so that you may be kept from stumbling. 
They will make you outcasts from the synagogue, but an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. These things they do because they have not known the Father or me. These are not my words, these are his words. And we go, oh boy, well, he's just talking to the disciples, right? Well, I I, I don't know about you, but when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I was baptized at 13 years old, I chose to become a disciple of Jesus. So therefore, that applies to me too. As a disciple of him, I should actually be hated by the world. But it doesn't bother me because it actually further says, truly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned to joy. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again. Your heart will rejoice. And listen to this. This is so good. Oh, good, they got it. Okay. And no one will take your joy away from you. Come on. I mean, this is exciting because this, what this tells me is that, okay, so the world is going to hate me. Persecution's going to come, but he already told me about that. And the reason he told me about that is because then I can know that he's actually the one in charge, that this doesn't escape his understanding, that this doesn't surprise him and him go, oh man, why did I make that one? Right? And we we go, okay, so he's actually in authority, so that means that he actually knows the ways, and if I follow in his ways, then he actually will lead me into joy, and he will lead me into life everlasting. And then what Paul talks about of these momentary trials that are, you know, light and passing, we can not go, yeah, okay, Paul, but we can go, yeah, no, it is passing, because this is not my eternity, This is just the moment of where I get my training boots on to say, I am with him and the world needs to know the truth. Being his disciple means your eyes have been made opened. Now there is a responsibility with that. We now get the opportunity and the extreme privilege to be his representation on the earth. Wow. I can't tell you. This opportunity right here, what that does inside of me leading up to, because I never, never want to mislead or take for granted or rely on myself. Because you don't need me. You need him in me. And so I will be a humble servant as often and as much as I am physically able to be that conduit. And this is what I feel he's saying tonight, that if persecution and hatred is coming your way because of your stance to say, I follow Jesus, take heart. Because further on too, he says, he has overcome the world. So you are with an overcomer. And it is his spirit in you that makes you able. And you may think, he doesn't know what I've done, who I am, where I've been. I'm sorry, but you're talking about the one who formed you in your mother. And he doesn't know. You're talking about the one that is outside of time, so you only know what this next moment is, but he's seen eons at the same time because he doesn't exist within time. There is no construct that can refrain God. He always was and always has been and always will be. We are the blip on the radar. So now this this blip on the radar gets to participate with the kingdom of heaven and know God. So yes, he knows where you're at, where you're from, but he also knows how exactly to reach your heart so that it is not troubled, so that you have the courage to believe in him and his son also, and to know that that cross was meant for you to now have access to his spirit.
living in you, leading you to truth, leading you in the way to go so that when you need to know, you know. And we can be like children to go, okay, what do we do now? Okay, this, this rubs my pride the wrong way, but okay. Because it's not about me, it's entirely about you. And we as his disciples can then walk through a world that hates us with, they hated him without cause. And we can stand and love as he has asked us to love. Because it isn't out of ourself. It is out of his Holy Spirit living in us that leads us, that guides us, because we're not orphans. We're part of a family and a body that he is coming back for. He's coming back for. If he wanted to accomplish things without you, Holy Spirit wouldn't reside in you. It would just be the Spirit doing whatever the Spirit wants to do. I mean, you read the Old Testament. When the Spirit comes and you're just, yeah. <sighs> Those kings found out the hard way that you do not want to cross God. And now His holiness chooses to dwell inside of us. That is the greatest miracle that ever could occur. And that holiness is the power of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that wants to change us so that now we can stand and say, hey world, wake up. Your Redeemer lives. Your Savior has made the way possible for you to know Him, for your sins to be forgiven, that you can start 2022 born new. <laughs> made new by him and his love for you so that you can experience and know the home that he has planned for us because he's coming and he wants to gather us together because he loves us. Y'all are very composed for that very exciting stuff. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's exciting. And if there's any hesitation inside of you of going like, eh, nah, 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 tell it to, okay, I almost said it. Tell it to be quiet. <laughs> because what, what makes me mad is that the accuser gets to be the one that runs the show. Because of what we gave him. So let's take it back. Let's tell him no. I am not going to believe your lies that make me feel about this big and like dirt underneath someone's shoes, but I'm going to believe the truth that Jesus Christ actually came. I actually believe in him and I actually want to live my life for him because he deserves that much. And whatever tomorrow may bring in this journey of loving him, bonus, it's going to be exciting because it's him. And someday I will see him face to face. And it won't be out of this, oh no, I should have. Why didn't I read your words? Why didn't I believe it? Why didn't I actually put it into action? But it will be out of a, wow, you are so much more than I ever expected. You are greater than anything I could have ever dreamed. You are more beautiful than the most precious thing I've ever seen. And my life lived for you may it have been a, a joy to you for the joy that you have given me. For the love that you have poured into me that when everything seems set against, you made the way. When everything seemed daunting and hopeless, that you gave your life. because you want us to know you laid it out and you told us what to expect so that we would believe you when it happens you want us to believe in you Jesus you want us to accept the words that you said not just as a set of facts in our heads but as a lifestyle for us to through your spirit be able to live but we've held on to too much stuff that we believe the lies that we can't 
that your spirit wouldn't want to live in us because there is too much. Well, by the authority that you have given power to those lies, you have the authority to take it back. So let's just take this time. Why not? Start 2022 fresh. Does that sound like a good plan to you? So let's close our eyes. Let's put our attention onto how amazing Jesus is. Jesus. We're all at such varying places in our understanding of who you are. But we want to come closer. There have been things in our lives that have tried to be so loud, so heavy. But your words will never mislead us. You tell us plainly that you have overcome the world and that we can abide in you just like you abide in the Father. We don't fully get it, but we want it. Would you agree with that? Would you tell him if you want it? Don't let shame or fear or anything else that might be trying to be loud right now in your head. You have a choice. His spirit will lead you to truth. It will show you the way to go. It will mark you for being his disciple. And he is giving it to you if you ask him for it. So Jesus, I choose to forgive myself. I choose to forgive those who have, have made it hard. I choose to give them a gift that I would want of a fresh start. And I ask for your spirit to fill me with the truth of what it is to believe you, to listen to you and you alone, not the lies, not the chaos, but you. We ask for our hearts and our minds and our bodies to be born again tonight. for your holy presence to fill us. Don't be afraid of the people beside you. Generally, people are, who are afraid of people realize that others are afraid of them too. Don't be afraid. Just respond to him. You feel something going on inside of you. You need to respond to him. It's not responding to me. It's not responding to the person beside you or the peer pressure. You need to respond to him. Ryan told us, love requires a response. What is your response tonight? It's okay to get loud. It's okay to move. But know that when you move, he moves. If you would like people to pray with you, please do. Please come up so that our pastors can love on you and help however they can. This is his heart for you tonight. You do not have to be the same after this moment. You don't. Be his humble servant too. Walk with him. He knows the way. 
Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.